Move over, God. Prepare for rebirth. Ooh. Oh! As you might already know, Stellaris Patch 3.6, which is currently in open beta, features a massive overhaul to the space combat mechanics and the way that all of our different ships interact. We've got an entirely new ship class, the Frigate, all of the weapons have been changed, rebalanced, we have a whole host of new mechanics included, and lots of things basically are just very, very different. Today I'm going to be looking at all of those changes and presenting you with some preliminary results, some things I have noticed while doing testing in this new edition, and hopefully we're going to be looking at what the meta is, or at least what the meta will be, once patch 3.6 moves from open beta to fully released very, very soon. So without any further ado, let's dive in. So the first thing I want to preface all of this with is that this is all still in beta. Things can and have changed as we've gone on. Until we actually get to a full release for patch 3.6, I don't feel comfortable presenting any permanent results yet. So do think of this video and everything I'm going to talk about here as preliminary testing results for what you'll be seeing with the space combat, with the ship combat in the game, and the direction the meta has now moved in. With that massive disclaimer out of the way, let's dive in to the nitty gritty and have a look at what all of the different ship types are now and where they fit into the hierarchy. We're going to work our way through each of the different classes in the game and not just each class but each of the new ship roles that we've got. I'm going to talk about how I think each of these ship roles perform, what their place is or could be in the meta going forwards, and I'm also going to split this up by chapters for each of the different ship classes, so do jump around if you want to look at that. Starting at the very bottom, we've now got four different apparent roles for corvettes. At the start of the game, you'll really be choosing between an artillery type corvette like this, something of a gunship type with your laser or kinetic weapons, or possibly throwing in a bit of point defense and having a screen type corvette instead. Now, the missiles here are going to be the most powerful weapon you will have right at the start of the game. Their range is unbeatable and they're doing a phenomenal amount of damage when they hit. However, simply sprinkling in 10 to 20% of point defense and you completely nullify any combat prowess of those artillery ships. At which point, having lasers or kinetic weapons on your ship is a very, very good idea if you don't want to be hard countered. You see, in the current state of the game, missiles are very, very powerful and you will almost certainly want to have a response to them because if you don't, you will probably be defeated by them. But they are just as easy, if not easier than ever, to negate by making sure you have some point defense amongst your fleets. When it comes to the Brawler class, I will look at this, but we'll first jump into frigates and come back to disruptors and autocannons when we get to the Destroyer class. Once you unlock torpedoes, you'll gain access to the frigate class ships. Now, frigates are quite powerful. They are particularly effective in the early game at taking on large enemy star bases because a torpedo will have its damage multiplied based on the ship's target size. That means when fighting against corvettes, you will deal two times the damage read here in the damage output because it is 100% of damage plus a further 100%. You will deal three times the damage versus destroyers, five times versus cruisers, and nine times the damage versus battleships. The same is true versus star bases, so up against a citadel, you'll be dealing nine times the damage of a torpedo, which is absolutely phenomenal. These ships can be quite useful at striking against cruisers, but against battleships in the late game, they tend to fall off in effectiveness due to their low hull points. They will generally die before you'll get into range and be able to deal all this extra damage. They're not particularly quick, they're not particularly agile, cruisers do supplant these as a torpedo carrying boat as soon as you get your hands on them. They do have the option of carrying neutron launchers, however neutron launchers are no longer the weapon that we once thought them to be. I'll get back to how neutron launchers have changed when we dive into cruisers, as a cruiser offers the most in terms of 
points to fit neutron launchers on. So overall here, yes, these frigates are powerful. They're reasonable against destroyers, quite nice against cruisers, and definitely devastating against star bases in the early to mid game. But their power absolutely falls off as the game goes on. You don't want to have these as the backbone of your fleet. They really won't be worth it. And if you're enjoying this video, please test the power of that like button. Destroyers have four different varieties. Screen ships, which will have picket slots on. Gunships, which you'll probably want to put lots of your regular weaponry on. Artillery ships, which at the moment could be something like a large weapon or in the early game mean filling it with lots and lots of missiles, as missiles now have a very long artillery type range in ship warfare. And the last type brawler here, that's going to be filled with your disruptors or your auto cannon. So destroyers are pretty much the best ship if you want to have an anti-missile, anti-fighter type ship amongst your fleet. I would generally recommend you put two point defense and one flak artillery on these. That's going to be something of a best all rounder role and then put a few brawler type weapons on, specifically something like a disruptor here is going to be relatively useful for this ship class. Just having some in the region of 10 to 15% of these amongst the ships in your fleet, you'll be able to deal with all of the missiles and almost all of the fighters that come your way. I have gone for slightly more point defense over flak here because generally speaking I would expect you to have some fighter component amongst your fleet simply to deal with some of the enemy fighters coming in and the fact that fighters are still very very effective at dealing with corvettes which are now the only ships really that can reliably max out at 90% evasion here and your fighters will have 100% tracking completely negating that effect in the mid to late game. So as you can already guess by what I'm talking about, the days of mono hulling are somewhat by the wayside. Now, I say that with a big caveat. When we start getting to lots of multiplayer combat in this, I expect that we might I expect that it will be preferable generally to not run an all-rounder fleet, but simply run a fleet that hard counters your opponent's mono hull fleet. But if you want to run all-rounders, which you may do, having a variety of ships is now much, much, much more viable, especially in single player games, than running just mono hull. The days of having a mixture of battleships with artillery and battleships with carriers are completely gone. Artillery destroyers are still somewhat viable, however, they're simply not as good as the other options we now have in the game. Yes, you're going to be getting some extra range, and later on putting kinetic artillery on these ships is definitely going to be useful, but you're now going to find it very difficult, even as a psionic, if you go with Mark of the Whisperers for a juicy extra 15% evasion, to max out this evasion. They've changed up the leader bonuses, they've changed up what grants evasion. Getting 90% evasion with a destroyer is now nigh impossible in the game. Not only that, your artillery destroyers can no longer fit neutron launchers on them. And additionally, all of your artillery weapons now have a minimum range. And that then brings us to the brawler class. Brawlers are going to be outfitted with disruptors or auto cannons. These weapons generally deal lots of extra damage. Now, disruptors specifically are phenomenally better in the current edition of the game than they were prior to the 3.6 beta. The damage output these bad boys do has been dramatically increased. If we compare a basic laser here, that's dealing 6.67 average damage, whereas a phase disruptor is dealing 4.34. That means you're dealing somewhere in the region of 60% the damage of a regular weapon. But regular weapons have to chew through armor and shields. So a full bypass weapon like a phase disruptor is now very, very powerful against enemy fleets. Not only that, it has maximum accuracy, so it's going to hit 100% of the time, Though its tracking does leave something to be desired against corvettes, you will be dodged occasionally. Disruptors are phenomenal weapons when you're fighting against other fleets. The main issue you're going to find with a brawler class ship filled with disruptors is that against star bases, you have a real problem. Star bases have a majority of their hit points in hull. They do have a large amount of armor, but minimal shielding. So yes, you'll be getting past around 20% of their hit points 
and that's when it comes to armor and shields, but you'll still have to chew through the 80%. At this point, it becomes much better to have something like a plasma cannon, which will be dealing additional hull and armor damage. Looking at the other weapon we have available, we see the auto cannon. Now, auto cannons are insanely powerful. However, they suffer a massive downside in this edition, which is minus 75% armor damage output. Minus 75% armor damage is very unpleasant when you're coming up against star bases. That is going to be really tough for your auto cannons to deal with because they've got so many points in armor damage. And also there has been a massive rebalance to the way that armor works in the game. Armor now costs slightly less and gives you many, many more additional armor hit points. We also can have armor regeneration happening while in combat, and that means that if you're fighting against an armored ship, you really cannot expect your autocannons to be doing a lot of work. Yes, they have very high damage output, but that minus 75% is going to be absolutely crippling. Now your brawlers get one additional advantage here, and that is an advantage you'll find very useful when you come up against long range artillery type ships. You see almost all L slot weapons here now have a minimum range. Lasers is a specific exception to this. They have no minimum range. They can always shoot you, but your kinetic weapons and other plasma weapons have a minimum range when they're a large weapon. That means as a brawler, if your range is shorter, and it should be, you should be at range 30, you can fit underneath the minimum range of the enemy weapons. Do be careful that your range bonuses don't put your maximum range outside the minimum range of the enemy fleet, and that is because now as of 3.6, your ships will sit at the maximum range of their weaponry. They won't try to get as close as possible, they will try to go to that maximum range. So brawler class will generally sit under the range of the enemy ships. And this is going to annoy the enemy ships because they'll have to reverse, turn around, move out of the way in order to fire at the closest ship in your fleet. Yes, they will still fire at other ships, but this gives your brawlers something of a small survivability advantage whilst also disrupting the enemy ships. Because when it comes to something like a battleship, you'll notice that we now have a firing arc on our ships and this does actually have an impact on both the ship firing behavior and the individual behavior of each of your battleships. So overall brawlers and specifically disruptors are now very very good against other ships, not against star bases. But what do you think about the new ship meta in Stellaris? What have your experiences been in game? I imagine, and this is generally true, that anecdotally people do tend to have different unique individual experiences on a small data scale when that is compared to the general trends here. Because what I'm talking about is general trends. So please let me know your experiences. I would love to hear them down in the comments below. Now we come up to the cruisers. So Strikecraft, how good are they? If you put on the right combat computer, have a carrier computer with additional ship engagement range, engaging at long, long range. I wish they would actually engage even further away because that would make them even more effective. However, they can be shot down by other strike craft and also by flak artillery. This means they can be quite effectively hard countered and they're not specifically fantastic against other enemy ships. Yes, both strike craft along with things like auto cannons have benefited in a large way from the disengagement opportunity introduction. You see, this disengagement opportunities means that your ships will only be able to attempt to disengage from combat a small number of times. So weapons like strike craft that deal very small amounts of damage again and again are now actually very, very good at killing enemy ships who will only get a, a few chances at rolling a small chance to disengage. Previously, they were very bad because an enemy battleship would have a very large number of rolls at this small chance, making it a very high chance overall. That's been flipped on its head with the changes. So Strikecraft, whilst like autocannons, are now good at stopping larger ships retreating, they'll kill them more than not, they just don't deal that much in the way of damage output and they can be hard countered quite effectively. So they're still good in their previous role of dealing with corvettes, and they're better at dealing with larger ships, but they're not a, a one-stop shop tool for dealing with all enemy vessels. So let's look at the cruiser role specifically. We've got the gunship role. Now that is going to basically fill you up with all of the regular kind of weapons. 
this is still a powerful ship roll, don't get me wrong. We've got the carrier class. This is, like before, quite good at dealing with corvettes. However, it tends to fall off against dealing with other ship types. Then we've got what the cruiser is specifically really good at, and that is when you make it into a torpedo class. This torpedo class will deal with battleships, titans, and star bases phenomenally well. It's going to fly in as close as possible to the battleships, hopefully going under their minimum range, and offload these torpedoes, which are phenomenally powerful against larger hull types. This ship will also be quite successful at dealing with other cruisers as well, and it will knock frigates out of the water. But what about neutron launchers? Neutron launchers are the energy weapon, they're the energy artillery weapon. How do they fare? Well, they now have a minimum range. The maximum range has been reduced, so they're about the same in range as kinetic artillery. They have the same damage stats when it comes to reduction to shield, armor, and hull damage, but their damage output has been drastically reduced. You'll see here, they deal an average damage of 3.38, whereas a devastated torpedo will deal 10.19. That means they are 70% lower than their short range torpedo equivalents. Yes, they deal additional damage versus larger ship sizes. However, they are simply no good at defeating other battleships or other cruisers. In a straight up fight with battleships armed with kinetic artillery, these neutron launcher cruisers will be eviscerated, cruelly and absolutely. So basically, generally speaking, I would not run neutron launchers anymore. They simply don't have the damage output they once had. They're not as good as they once were. They, they really are not worth it amongst your ship designs. Now, there are some specific niche cases, of course, with all of these weapons where they might be worth it, but they're really just not that good in terms of power output. You'd much rather have kinetic artillery on your side. I have even tried testing out naked neutron launcher cruisers. Basically, I have kept the defenses on here because as you can see, our hull points are very low. We do need that armor and shields in order to survive. But the neutron launcher output damage here is really not enough even to make these ships economically viable when stripped out of all other weaponry. So overall, your cruiser class really are the best when it comes to having torpedoes and a mixture between a torpedo brawler mix here. This is going to be quite effective against anything which is of a reasonable size. So destroyers and up, this will deal with quite nicely. And any star bases that you come across. You probably want to throw something like advanced afterburners on this for the additional sublight speed. That way you can close range with the enemy ships faster as you will be suffering when you come up against artillery types as they'll get the first shots against you. And if you're enjoying this video and the other videos on this channel and you'd like to do something to support this channel, you can get your hands on a fantastic deal from Humble Bundle until the 19th of November. The 11-Bit Studios Complete Collection, including Frostpunk Game of the Year Edition, the award-winning This War of Mine, Moonlighter, Children of Mortar, and more, all for under 15 euros by following the Humble Bundle affiliate link down in the description and purchasing that bundle from the Humble Bundle store. You can also adjust the donation of your purchase to decide how much you want to put to charity, how much to the publishers, and how much you would like to put towards supporting this channel. Links to that and more down in the description below. So how are battleships faring these days? Well, battleships come in three classes, artillery, carrier, or gunship. The gunship class is pretty mediocre. The artillery class is very effective if you put kinetic artillery on. Kinetic artillery are the new neutron launchers of Stellaris. The minimum range issues they have are definitely present, and you'll also find you'll have issues when coming up against torpedoes with a battleship class ship. Not only that, but because of the changes that have been made to the meta here, with a prevalence towards having anti-shield, anti-hull weaponry, I now suspect tachyon lances are going to be the better X-slot weapons, if not specifically going over and having your focused Archimitters instead to have a full bypass weapon on your hand. However, Archimitters do suffer from that minimum damage being so drastically low. Even with a multiplicative state, you could still roll somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 damage as an output there, which is drastically worse 
than the minimum damage here of 780, meaning that you can get lots of spiking with your Archimitters, but you won't be getting lots of spiking with your Tachyon Lances. Tachyon Lances though, they are probably now better than Giga Cannons because they're going to pair up quite nicely with Kinetic Artillery. You'll still be having issues with your longest range weapons having lower shield damage, whereas you probably want them to have higher shield damage, lower armor damage, but you will need something to cut through enemy armor because no longer are crystal plates the most effective way of outfitting your artillery battleships. You see, we'll get 660 ship hull points here from a crystal forged plate, but if we move over to something like dragon scale, if you can get it, or just neutronium armor, if you can't, you'll get a massive amount of armor points from this armor class. Yes, it will cost you slightly more alloys now, but is now economically effective as long as you're coming up against lots of this kinetic artillery. Even when you're coming up against neutron launchers, the neutron launchers are just no longer effective enough to really make crystal plating all that viable. They also deal additional damage to hull, so yeah, crystal plating, generally speaking, is not as powerful as it once was. It is now, I would say, especially in the late game, better to have armor a lot of the time, at least in my testing, than it has been to have crystal plating. So a prevalence amongst these weapons you'll see is that we have reduced armor damage. Kinetic artillery, also with the auto cannons, that is going to have a real effect on the way that you're going to be outfitting the defensive modules on your ships. We've also of course got the carrier class that can have some fighters. Again, the problem here is that these fighters really are just not that powerful and they can be hard countered. Titans have something of an interesting role now. So. Titans will only get a maximum multiplicative damage of an extra 800% from those torpedo type weapons, so you'll be no more at risk than a regular battleship. Their auras are still definitely quite good, tracking has if anything gotten better, and the defensive nanobot cloud is better than ever before amongst your fleet, because that regen will be divided by 10 and then start happening whilst in combat. Their range is good, their weapons are good, so yes, you still want to be using these in your fleet. Defense platforms and star bases are in a really weird position. So defense platforms now can have the missile station type, which basically has torpedo. And that means you can put neutron launchers or devastator torpedoes on these ships. You probably don't want to go with the devastator torpedoes because they have such low range. However, if you're coming up against enemy cruisers which have torpedoes designed to destroy your star bases, this can be a very useful and effective tactic. But overall, neutron launchers are generally better until they get inside of your minimum range. It is a little bit confusing when it comes to choosing the best design for your defensive platform. I do generally think though that these artillery type ships with the lower minimum range are not an issue on your defense platforms overall. Most ships will be outside of that minimum range most of the time, again, unless you come up against any torpedoes. And for that, you probably just want to have some of your own torpedoes ready to deal with them at close range, or maybe some fighters that can fight at any specific range. Because you can now have gunship, screen, artillery, carrier, and energy torpedo classes when it comes to these defense platforms. And each of them are generally reasonable. The picket class overall is probably the most important, ironically, because this is the only way you'll have at dealing with enemy missiles. Without this, an enemy fleet might turn up with some missiles and just completely devastate your star base. We should also look at the composition of star bases now in the game, so don't forget that torpedo batteries now add torpedo slots to your star bases. And if they are not neutron launchers, if they're actual torpedoes, these can be absolutely devastating against other fleets. Even when they're neutron launchers, neutron launchers are still reasonable at dealing with the enemy ships. The main issue you'll have is that some of these weapons have very short range on your star bases, meaning that your star base simply won't be able to deal with enemy carriers. Carriers are still the most effective way of taking out an enemy star base without having any losses for yourself. But I want to reiterate this, do not underestimate the effectiveness of torpedo batteries, especially in the mid game on your star bases. And now we come to the largest class ship in the game, the Juggernaut class. Now, this has got some interesting new possibilities because of the way the meta has changed. And that all comes down to the auras. If you now put on the ECM emitters, 
that is going to have a massive effect on your enemy's point defense. So if you run a missile heavy fleet and they think that because they have the right ratio of point defense, they'll suffer absolutely no damage, throwing a juggernaut with an ECM emitter in can absolutely ruin their day in a hilarious fashion. Now, yes, you're only getting a 30% reduction here. So what you won't do is completely negate their point defense at all, but it still will have a very large amount of effectiveness at letting your missile weapons fly through. Regenerative hull tissue as well, because it now fires in combat or any regenerative component on these juggernauts are more effective than ever due to the massive size of the juggernaut ships. I would actually recommend you go with something like armor on your juggernaut and regenerative hull tissue now over shield equivalents because that armor will regenerate faster in combat as it's a percentage based increase the more armor you have. And this can be very effective at using your juggernaut to deal with small to medium sized enemy fleets. They're still not the biggest heavy hitters, their weapons aren't amazing given how expensive they are, but don't underestimate the fact that their auras now have slightly more important effects in the way they actually operate. Things like target acquisition array here can give you a devastating range advantage, and if you're running missiles, as I said, ECM emitters can be hilarious. Not only that, but they also contain a shipyard, meaning that a juggernaut can repair all of your fleets while you're in enemy space far away from any of your own star bases. They can operate as a forward star base for all of your ships. There is also the armor and shield hardening modules. Now, now of course, armor hardening is only effective and shield hardening when dealing with bypass weapons. Shield hardening is slightly more effective generally because it will deal with both regular bypass weapons and also deal with enemy missiles. Overall, I've noticed that armor hardening has a massive effect at nerfing bypass weapons, then making something like an autocannon the best brawler weapon you can get your hands on. But the effects of this are generally very, very niche and specific. You have to know what you're coming up against. If you don't come up against enemies with bypass weaponry, armor hardening can be completely useless. So I'm actually not sure if it is one of the most effective and useful things you will even want to have on your ships in the game now in 3.6, unless you have a complete intelligence advantage over the enemy. So overall, the meta is in something of a strange position. I expect artillery battleships like this still to have a mainstay in many fleets. The spinal mount weapons are still the most powerful weapons in the game by far, and you're still going to be getting massive alpha strike potential with something like kinetic artillery. However, the power of something like a mixed brawler torpedo class cruiser cannot be understated. This is very good at dealing with those battleships, and you probably want to have some of these in your fleets to deal with other mixed torpedo brawler type class cruisers. Preventing enemy missiles dealing damage and enemy fighters is imperative, otherwise you're going to be really suffering, especially in the early and mid game, so pickets are now much more important than they used to be. Frigates, as I've mentioned, do tend to fall off once you reach the mid game, specifically once you kind of get cruisers on your side, then you don't really need them as much. They could be somewhat useful for dealing with battleships in the late game. If you're going to have a battleship fleet, it would be cheaper to have a small contingent of these frigates here than cruisers, but generally the cruisers are just better ships, so I would tend to focus on those over these frigates. Corvettes are in something of a weird spot at the moment. If your enemy has no defense against your missiles, they are fantastically good, especially with their very high evasion. But missiles do get outranged by kinetic artillery and X-slot weapons, making them somewhat meh in the mid to late game. So I don't expect you to run that many later on. Also, because you no longer have access to these torpedoes, you actually find that Corvettes are very poor at dealing damage to battleship and cruiser classes in the mid to late game. So really what I can see happening here with the meta is corvettes are somewhat dead. Frigates are useful, but will be replaced by, by cruisers. Destroyers are very useful for their picket potential and as a brawler class ship and battleships as ever are fantastic in their damage output potential as an artillery role. They won't be that good though if they come up against something that is their Achilles heel. 
I'm going to wrap this up now with some of my thoughts on what I think actually should be changed still in the beta in order to provide slightly more balance in combat and additionally provide a bit more a kind of variety and more interesting combat encounters. Now, what we've seen basically as I've gone through so far is that artillery is still prevalent, but we now also have a use for torpedoes, disruptors, something like this mix between a torpedo brawler class, and you want to have some picket type defenses to deal with enemy missiles. But as I've mentioned overall, missiles do massively fall off in effectiveness as we reach the mid to late game and your corvettes kind of become a little bit useless. How do I think this can be solved? Well, I think that the range for missiles should be dramatically increased. They should have the longest range for any weapon in the game, making them something like a weapons platform that sits outside the regular combat range for all other weapon types. Give them a range of somewhere in the region of 150 to 200 and let them sit back at the edge of the system and put salvo after salvo of missile into the enemy and that should be somewhat effective. Yes, they should still be countered by picket slots, but make it so that your enemy has to include picket slots because by the late game, you actually can probably get away with having no picket slot destroyers and simply use your longer range to effectively deal with these missiles because missiles have travel time. They take time to get to your opponent and that means that any instant hit weapons will hit harder, they'll hit sooner and they will prevent further missiles being fired. So missiles should have an increased range. We also should be increasing the engagement range of strike craft yet further. I would also love, and this is something of a left field idea here, for Strikecraft to be able to be deployed from one system and engage in an adjacent system. Now there are some big problems with that idea. Yes, if you had your systems entirely connected with gateways, you could create some mega death stack defensiveness by having all of these uh, basically fighters go and fly into one of your systems that's attacked at any one time. And I can see that that would need work. I don't yet have a specific solution with how to deal with that, but I think that allowing fighters to engage in an adjacent system would massively increase their uh, potential and potency though it could lead to some issues. Yes, I, I can see that from a coding perspective as well. It might be uh, rather challenging to implement that. So failing, allowing them to engage in an adjacent system, give Strikecraft system-wide engagement range. Allow your Strikecraft to deploy the second an enemy enters a system from anywhere. That should mean that Strikecraft actually have some devastating tactical effectiveness and act as a roadblock in any system that they are present in. Yes, you can still shoot them out the sky. Yes, you can still counter them with flak, but they should be harassing enemy ships far away on the other side of the system. I'm thinking full on Battlestar Galactica here. You know, I, I think that would be really fantastic. And then when it comes to artillery weapons, we should reduce their range yet further. Make it so that kinetic artillery and the like have a maximum range of around 100, well, 80 to 100. Make the lasers around 70 or so and then you know squish all of those ranges in do keep the minimum ranges at about 45 here but bring those maximum ranges down so we reduce the alpha strike potential of these artillery type weaponry the same is also true for these tachyon lances and the like and we should also give them a minimum range they should be somewhat negated now i don't think the battleships should be completely negated at being an effective thing in the game how can we deal with that give them auras once again. If battleships had auras like titans, but those auras were much less effective, but stacked, that would mean that battleships would be very useful to have in your fleet. If you're giving your fleet, let's say, 2% additional shield hit points fleet-wide by having a single battleship, which is crew to give additional points there. And also these numbers here, I'm just kind of plucking numbers out. Don't take them as we need exactly 2% additional shield uh, hit points fleet-wide for one battleship. But if we had auras on our battleships, yes, whilst they are no longer the uh, best weapons at dealing damage, and yes, they can be defeated by cruisers and frigates with torpedoes quite easily, they would then have a specific and effective role to play in our fleets. 
Not only that, if we've also improved the ability of Strikecraft by making them a system-wide engagement range, or even allowed them to engage fleets one system away, or deploy to engage fleets one system away, that could cement the battleships as the ultimate carrier type in the game, giving it a defined and useful role, and meaning, hopefully then, we're going to have a specific role for everything from all the way down from corvettes all the way up to our battleships and that's what a lot of us i think would like specific roles and uses and niche for every ship class so that nothing feels pointless at any stage in the game these have just been my thoughts by preliminary findings on the fleet combat meta in stellaris please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and if you'd like to find out more about the new patch 3.6 click the video on screen now